Hi, everyone, and welcome to Weather or Not. I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg, and we're here today because we're approaching December, and I wanted to give you a feel about our forecast and our pattern as we head into December, especially coming off of this cold shot that we ended November with and the first flakes around the area, and so many people are asking me, Okay, does this mean we've gotten off to a, a fast start and we've got a cold winter coming? And truth be told, there's really not a great correlation between what we have in November and what the winter turns out to be. I did a little research on some of the milder Novembers, and really I didn't see an overall heavy pattern. When I looked at snowfall in November, some early season snowfalls came out with one big correlation where we had the big 95, 96 winter with over 75 inches of snow, but the other winters that showed some early November snowfall, not that we had a lot this November, it didn't correlate to any big winters. So throw that out immediately. But what do we see on the table of December? Well, first of all, we welcome you to whether or not and our outlook here as we go into meteorological winter, which is, of course, the first of December. We talk about December, January, and February when we're dealing with some of our winter forecasts. And my thoughts just looking at the overall pattern, I always like to go to sports comparisons. If you're looking at your favorite sports team, for instance, at the beginning of the season, you like the players you have, you're hopeful that maybe you're a contender. Um, you have to watch that team in the early part of the season as they start to get their identity and the players start to gel and eventually they develop a chemistry and you're verified, okay, you know what, this team's for real, they have a chance. This is kind of the way I'm seeing this winter begin to evolve. There's definitely players on the field. Ducks are on the pond. We've got an active jet stream down south. It's been a lot of big wet storms down south. There's some severe weather there. And now we're starting to see some of the polar air outbreaks. And we've had a big lake snow event. There was nearly 50 inches of snow uh, east of Lake Ontario with that first event in November. Which, by the way, some of our biggest lake effect snow events come in November because the lake temperatures, the Great Lakes are still in the 40s. And you get those Arctic air masses coming in. It's just primed to drop all that snow. So the players are there. You're seeing some of the signals. We've talked about El, Mi El Nino. There's all that potential for some big snowstorms. But I think it's going to take a little while for this weather pattern to gel, get some chemistry, get in sync, and then we start to see that opportunity for coastal systems. If you were with us on a previous weather or not, and we talked about the pattern headed into the winter, it was ripe for more nor'easters or coastal storms. But right now, you know, we've been missing storms to the south. We get a front from the north. It's just not in sync just yet. So let's get into what we're seeing at least as we head into the beginning of December as things start to get into sync just a little bit. So so we go into the 1st of December and we've climbed out of that cold shot that we got to end November and we have some moderation. And I think overall the pattern into early December does not feature any extended harsh chill or any big coastal storms. That doesn't mean that we won't get a storm that has an icy edge to it uh, or maybe a drenching downpour where we get some soakings, but I don't see any major storm systems and I think the first half of December we're still setting the table for what's to come. So as we go into that first weekend of December, what we're going to look to is an opportunity by the end of the weekend for a storm that is developing along the southeast coast, the mid-Atlantic coast, to try to come northward and brush us a little bit. So there will be some storminess. I still don't see it as a setup for a big storm, but in the end, sometime in that late Sunday into Monday time period, we may get a good rainfall, at least for parts of the area. Uh, we go into next week and... That storm may have multiple pieces, and this is the very big challenge with this early December pattern. There's multiple pieces flying across the country. There's a little polar air. There's a little Pacific air. So I just think we're kind of in a minefield where things are happening rapidly, but there's no one big system coming. One thing I did want to point out to you, as we thaw out and we go into a milder stretch for the first few days of December and overall into the first 10 days, there's some sneaky cold air that might get you if you have outdoor plans and a lot of holiday things going on in this later Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday time period, there may be a shot of cold air. I don't think it's cold air associated with snow. It's probably cold and dry, but it is getting a little colder. And then what you notice on this over upper air pattern, I'm showing these steering winds here, is that those jet, those lines you see across the country, that's essentially the jet stream. And when it's not going wavy up and down, that just means that systems are moving fast and they don't get terribly strong. I mean, they can get a little strong as they get to the coast and this 
some enhancement, but there's not a big storm. So there's more Pacific air coming in and all those shades of blue and purple and all that cold Arctic air, that's all bottled up to the north. So once we get past that little cold shot midweek next week, I see a moderation into the 9th and 10th. We're not in the core of the warm air, but we at least get seasonable and maybe even a touch above average. Just looking ahead to the late week rain event, Everything looks very, very light on Friday. Uh, it's more favored on the second half of Friday into Friday night. Some of our northern suburbs may get on this in the morning hours. We get out of that, and unfortunately, it's kind of a, a dirty um, attempt to clear as we go into Saturday. Earlier, I thought, you know, maybe we can get some sunshine out there on Saturday, but it looks like there's another little disturbance that's over western and upstate New York, same places that got buried with snow, get rainfall. We're going to have a tough time seeing clearing. Maybe there's a, a few breaks. I don't think there's much rain. There might be a stray shower, especially to the north. Uh, that's the more dependable part of the weekend if you need to get out and do things where it's dry out. And then on Sunday, notice we're kind of nestled in this spot where there's a pretty good storm coming offshore, and then there's a piece to the north. And like I said, we're just out of sync. There's not a, a merging of the two systems, so our rainfall once again is likely to be light. It could be at any time during the day, but it's likely to be light. Once again, it's rain. It looks like we're on the mild side, wind coming off the Atlantic. There has been a new trend that I'm starting to see that maybe there's a piece left behind, and our best threat of rain actually comes Sunday night into Monday. That's something we'll be working on with the forecast. But in a nutshell, you've got your light rain event that we deal with on Friday in the second half of the day and in the Friday night. And then to end the weekend, we're going to have a feature that might be a little bit stronger. So right now I'm leaving that question there, even though that map uh, is just showing some scattered showers, there might be a steadier rain into Monday. That's something that if you were with us on the last weather and off, and I was with meteorologist Jeff Smith, we talked about, you know, not being tethered to these models when we're looking out, especially because they're going to, we know that uh, their Achilles heel in this system is they can't really time things well in a long-range forecast when storms are moving so quickly. So it's up to us, up, up to, us to decipher that. All right, so let's go ahead and look beyond that seven day. And what you notice is, is a big above normal signal. I mean, it looks really warm and well above normal in the middle of the country. Well, we kind of hover near normal. So that's why our forecast in terms of precipitation amounts, where our normals are still in the upper 40s to around 50, at least during the daylight hours, it doesn't really favor big snowfall totals. It's more rainfall and precipitation as well, more of a, a near normal. So what is normal when we're talking about December? Well, as we head into the month, Month, we're looking at normals that go from, let's say, 49 degrees for your highs to begin the month to maybe upper 30s by the end of the month. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, one other thing uh, that I wanted to touch upon as we go through the second half of the month, where we're still trying to get our footing in a winter pattern in the first two weeks, is that what we look to is a signal from the polar vortex. The polar vortex, this large circulation, uh, of course, in the high latitudes, it's it's been definitely a buzz phrase over the last several years and it it's not just showing up. It's always been there. It's always something we watch. But along with bombogenesis, uh, the big dramatic weather words have definitely come into our lexicon. Well, listen, it's always there. And what we look at during the season is how is that polar vortex shaped? Where is it reaching? How strong is it? And you'd probably think, well, a strong polar vortex, we may be looking at big Arctic outbreaks. It's actually just the opposite. When it's stronger, it's very much consolidated in the high latitudes over the pole over the Northwest Territories of Canada. What we tend to see when the polar vortex gets weaker and more fractured, that more of that polar air can start coming down into North America. Now, sometimes it may go toward Western Canada and the West Coast and toward Alaska, but other times it can come into the Northeast. And what we're seeing is for the second half of the month is that polar vortex may weaken a little bit and all of a sudden we've got some real legitimate polar outbreaks along the with an active storm track. And maybe as we get toward Christmas and New Year's, now we're starting to see um, more you know, legitimate snow threats coming into the area. So that's something I'm seeing and watching in the long term. And coupled with that signal of a weaker polar vortex is this warming that we're seeing happening even up in the stratosphere. We don't just look down where the weather's happening. We look in the stratosphere too, and there's some warming there. And without, without getting into the weeds of it, that would sort of go right along and complement the idea of a weaker polar vortex and more Arctic air getting into the Northeast. 
So getting back into those December averages, uh, typically we would expect to start out the month in the upper 40s. That's actually what's going to happen by the end of the month. We're actually averaging lower 40s. Your nighttime lows going from 38 to 30. That's why that... Uh, pretty harsh November cold air outbreak was very unusual. Uh, we go into precipitation, rainfall, four and a third inches. Snowfall, you actually average nearly five inches of snow. Now, last year, of course, you know what last winter did. Didn't get a stitch of snow. A um, couple inches overall. No one day had um, more than an inch of snow. We still have this huge snowless record going on. We had um, nearly two inches out of one storm, but both days were 0.9 inches. And uh, it, it sounds boring to you. It's exciting to me that we still have this long streak where we haven't had an inch of snow in one day in New York City. So last year was all about getting a lot of precipitation in December, but it was in the form of rainfall and nearly six inches of liquid. Sunset times. So obviously we go into our earliest sunsets through the beginning of December. By December 31st, you've gained a little bit. I don't know if it's noticeable. It's about 4.38 in the afternoon. The winter solstice will hit on the 21st this year. Hits late evening, 10.27 in the evening. And then we have the full cold moon, which will be on the 26th. So of course, after the solstice, our shortest amount of daylight of the year, our longest shadows, we start to see our longer days start to kick in and it starts to feel a little bit lighter as we go through the day. So again, that's the time of the month where we may start to get active and we may start to talk a little bit more about the threat of significant snows. Before we end, one note I wanted to talk about is that there was a big solar storm observed over recent days. So that um, solar wind is headed toward the Earth's atmosphere. And what happens is as it encounters the Earth's magnetic field, um, what it's called, it's called a coronal mass ejection, and it tries to follow the Earth's magnetic field, uh, follows that to the poles, but the stronger the storm is, that solar storm is, you start to get that impact where it's interacting with the magnetic field and causing all those particles to emit colors of light. It gets into some lower latitudes. So we'll see how far it's going to go. We'll continue to keep you updated on that. I mean, typically, even when it's strong, we see it in you know the Great Lakes and parts of New England, but maybe even in upstate New York especially away from um, any type of light pollution. We may talk about uh, the Aurora Borealis, um, one of my bucket lists. I have not been able to see that in person, but uh, just a fantastic sight, and we definitely have had some sightings in upstate New York, so something we will keep you updated on as we get a little closer and see how strong that geomagnetic storm would be. That is this edition of Weather or Not as we continue to give you weekly updates on the forecast discussion and let you know about any changes in the long term. Right now, kind of a docile beginning beginning of December. Not that we're going to have no storms, but I don't see any big snow threats just yet, but they may be coming by the second half of the month. Thanks for watching and join us next time on Whether or Not Rain or Shine.